known as the Pearl of Africa, Uganda is a captivating country. This is a land of breathtaking beauty, from rolling hills to shimmering lakes to misty mountains and dense rainforests. Its diverse landscapes and fantastic wildlife make it a spectacular destination. Even though it's right on the equator, did you know that Uganda has snow caps? From one of the highest mountain ranges in Africa to the mighty Nile, the country is filled with natural beauty. Here, you will have the opportunity to encounter African elephants, the rare and endangered mountain gorillas, and if you're lucky, you'll spot the tree climbing lions. Uganda has over 50 distinct tribes, each with its own traditions, music and dance. This country is the perfect blend of natural beauty, a vibrant culture and friendly people. In this video, I'm going to show you Uganda's largest national parks, Murchison Falls and Queen Elizabeth. We're going to visit Uganda's botanical garden and the famous Mabamba swamps. I am taking you on a trek to the impenetrable forest Bwindi in search of mountain gorillas. And we're going on many boat rides, including a visit to the most gorgeous lake in the country, Lake Bunyoni. Welcome on a journey to the most beautiful places in Uganda. This is a safari adventure I will not forget. Our first morning in Uganda, we woke up to the sound of the birds in a tiny neighborhood in Entebbe. Entebbe is a small city of around 70,000 people located on the shores of Lake Victoria. This is where the only international airport in Uganda is located. Our first visit this morning, we are going on a boat ride on Lake Victoria. Then we will transfer to smaller boats and enter the Mabamba swamps. Lake Victoria is the largest lake in Africa and the second largest freshwater lake in the world. The lake covers a huge area and has a coastline with three countries, Tanzania, Kenya and Uganda. There are over a thousand islands in the lake, some are very small, others uninhabited. Lake Victoria is also one of the main sources that feeds the Nile River. At the beginning of the swamp area, other locals came to pick us up. We switched to their smaller boats to enter the swamps. This wetland has great ecological importance and is a big birding site home to over 300 species of birds. This morning, we are hoping to see the elusive and prehistorical looking Shubio. We're extremely lucky to find a mom and its baby. Okay, it's going to fly. The mom flew away, but the baby let us approach it from real close. This strange looking bird has a razor sharp beak that can decapitate any fish or even a small crocodile. Our baby has yellow eyes, but some shubios have exotic, pale blue eyes that can be very striking. Shubios are mainly silent, but they do communicate through clapping their bills very fast. This is a vulnerable bird species that needs protection. Navigating through the narrow waterways, the tranquility of the swamp is enchanting. We were surrounded by tall papyrus and gorgeous lilies. Our next stop is the National Botanical Garden of Uganda. You can walk around the botanical garden all day. This is a vast and captivating place to explore. The Uganda National Botanical Garden serves as a platform for education, research and recreation. We have pink, we have the small finger banana, we have the long one, we have the purple banana, so different species. We have where we make alcohol, banana, uh, whiskey. <laughs> Situated along the shores of Lake Victoria, the garden is a scenic backdrop for some beachside relaxation or a picnic with friends. One of the first Tarzan movies was also shot here, in black and white, back in 1940. The park is a tapestry of plants, animals and flowers. There are over 120 types of herbs and 300 varieties of trees here. 
If you look closer, you will notice all sorts of fascinating insects and these huge sprawling spider webs are quite interesting. Just be careful not to stumble into one. The park is a heaven for bird enthusiasts and home to over 115 species of birds. If you visit the botanical garden, make sure to pay a small fee and hire a guide. It's worth having a local person with you to show you the best spots and tell you all about the many plants and animals. Later that afternoon, we walked through the neighborhood surrounding our hotel. Walking on the streets of Uganda is safe and people are very friendly. It was nice to be able to witness the daily lives of the locals. And we got to try some sweet baked yams. Next, we're off to Murchison Falls National Park. On route, we stop at the local roadside market. This is a popular stop for drinks and snacks. The vendors immediately surrounded our car with many choices. Roasted bananas, chicken sticks, sliced pineapple and other goodies. Further down the roads, we were served this huge fish lunch with mashed bananas and french fries. We traveled all day on the beautiful country roads. Driving in Uganda is on the left and there are roads and a few highways linking most of the country. <laughs> Late night, we arrived at our lodge near the lake and fell asleep to the sound of the crickets. Early morning, we headed to the park. Good morning once again. I want to welcome you to Murchison Falls National Park. Murchison Falls National Park is a stunning nature reserve renowned for its diverse and captivating landscapes. The park covers over 3,800 square kilometers or about 1,500 square miles. This is the largest and one of the oldest protected wildlife areas in Uganda. The park borders Lake Albert. Murchison Falls is one of Uganda's most popular destinations. The park is absolutely gorgeous. Many types of antelopes roam in the prairies. We saw many of Jackson's heart beasts, the Fasa water bugs, and Uganda cops. Elephants are thriving here. Many herds were crisscrossing the park. It's so sweet to see the baby elephants wedged in the middle of the herd, guided by their elders. The park also holds the largest global population of Rothschild giraffes. About three quarters of the world's population lives here. It's an amazing feeling when you see a giraffe in the wild, in front of you for the very first time. What a fascinating animal! We saw so many giraffes in the park and we got to see them from real close. Murchison Falls has many buffaloes and a huge variety of birds. As a bird lover, I was so excited. With over 450 species of birds recorded within the park, we will be surrounded by birds. And of course, we were most excited to see the lions. We had many lion encounters and saw entire prides. And we were also extremely lucky to see a leopard and its baby. They crossed the road right in front of our vehicle one early morning. Needless to say, everyone was overjoyed. There was something interesting happening around us all the time. And let me show you the sunrise. Every morning we were greeted with breathtaking views. The landscape of Murchison Park consists of various ecosystems. Vast savanna grasslands, woodlands, dense river and forests and swamps. 
There are tall borassus palms and many acacia trees. This diverse habitat supports a rich and vibrant wildlife. The Nile River flows right through the park, providing a lifeline for many animals. The park is named after the dramatic, breathtaking Murchison Falls. It's considered one of the most powerful waterfalls in the world, as the entire mighty Nile River forces its way through a very narrow gorge before plunging down in a dramatic cascade, creating one of the strongest natural water forces on Earth. The sheer force of the water rushing through the gorge creates a powerful mist and a thunderous sound. You can walk on top of the waterfall or hike all the way down. Instead of hiking, we took a boat ride up the river at the foot of the falls. This boat ride was beautiful but quite long. It took about three hours to get to the falls and a little bit less to get back. Along the way, we saw hundreds of hippos, giant Nile crocodiles, many birds, and many other animals along the riverbanks. The most anticipated moment was approaching the base of the waterfall. A staggering 300 cubic meters of water rushed through the rocks every second. Astonishing! At dawn the next morning, we took a different boat safari, this time going down the Nile. The river delta is home to many birds, and the early morning atmosphere is magical. Going downstream provided a unique opportunity to observe wildlife from a different perspective and witness the breathtaking scenery of Uganda's nature waking up early morning. Gliding down the Nile was a very relaxing experience. Along the shore, we were lucky to see the Shubio again. <laughs> After three days in Murchison Falls National Park, we headed south to Queen Elizabeth National Park. Traveling the roads of Africa is a colorful adventure. Comfortably seated in our jeep, we observed the daily interactions of people as their lives unfolded right before our eyes. On this particular day, there were huge processions to celebrate Easter. And everyone was dressed in their best outfits. Some of the processions went on for miles. After a day and a half on the road, we arrived at Queen Elizabeth National Park. At first glance, Queen Elizabeth seemed to have less wildlife than Murchison Falls National Park. The landscape here seemed a bit less varied, and the park is very dusty. We saw way more tourists and safari jeeps in Queen Elizabeth than in Murchison Falls. Driving through the park, you can see Uganda's tallest mountain range on the horizon, the dramatic Renzori Mountains, which make for a stunning backdrop. The park is very photogenic. Queen Elizabeth is the second largest conservation park in Uganda. The park has the highest concentration of hippos in East Africa. About 5,000 hippos live on its territory. There are also many buffaloes, elephants and antelopes. We saw many lions roaming around the park, solo or in large prides. We were very excited to spot the baby servo, the African wildcat. We were also very lucky to see another leopard from up close. Her name is Grace and she wears a GPS collar. I had never seen this before, but in Uganda, the rangers have put GPS devices on a few of the big cats in the park to be able to track their movements. You can pay additional money for a leopard or a lion experience, 
and the rangers will take you right to the animal you want to see. It's an expensive add-on and we did not pay for it. We were lucky that our guide was able to find grace for us. Queen Elizabeth National Park has local villages within the park's boundaries and people live alongside the wildlife. We had a very eventful afternoon when an elephant decided to come in and walk through our hotel's gardens. Don't go, don't just keep a distance. Keep a distance. There are 72 crater lakes scattered around the equator, some of which are located in Queen Elizabeth National Park. These lakes are the remnants of volcanic activity from over 8,000 years ago. The crater lake in front of us contains salt water and people collect salt from it. It's a popular tourist stop as the local villages have a market here for African souvenirs. One of the park's most iconic features is the Kazinga Channel, a natural waterway that connects Lake Edward and Lake George. The banks of the channel attract many animals that come here to enjoy the water. Look how much these buffaloes are loving their spa time. They're laying in the water with so much pleasure. The channel is famous for its dense population of hippos. Our boat was surrounded by big pods of these giant animals. We also came across a family of elephants splashing around the water. Queen Elizabeth is ranked as the second best birdwatching area in Africa. Here you can see over 600 species of birds, some of which live along the channel. We also spotted a few crocodiles and marveled at the beautiful scenery. We set off for the Ishasha sector in Queen Elizabeth National Park. The Ishasha sector welcomed us with many butterflies along the road. We noticed an elephant digging a hole in the middle of a meadow. He seemed very pleased with his improvised mud bath. We stayed in a beautiful lodge near the park. This is how our shower water is being heated. Elizabeth is also known for its tree climbing lions, which are typically seen in the Ishasha sector. If you're lucky, you can spot lions lounge in the branches of acacia trees, fig trees, or candelabra trees. Don't be fooled by their cactus appearance. These trees are no cacti, and they are a preferred spot to find lions hanging out. Ishasha is one of the only two places in all of Africa where I can see tree climbing lions. What an unusual lion behavior! Next, we're headed for the south to the windy, impenetrable forest. Bwindi is one of the ancient rainforests in Uganda and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has 400 plant species growing on its steep hillsides. But we're not going to the impenetrable forest for its exceptional biodiversity. We're going on a trek to look for the mountain gorillas. The word windy means darkness. Hiking this magnificent forest, you will quickly understand why this park is called the impenetrable forest. We hiked for about two hours on steep slopes and a rugged and muddy terrain, going through patches of dense and overgrown jungle that our guides would cut with machetes so we can make our way to the gorillas. After a long, muddy trek up the hills, we found our family of gorillas. Bwindi is home to about 300 mountain gorillas, or more than half of the world's population. The mountain gorillas are an endangered species, making Bwindi a critical conservation area for these magnificent creatures. It's amazing to be able to stand so close to them 
and observe these giants in their natural habitat. Once you reach the gorillas, you have one hour with them before your guides take you back down the mountain. We were asked to wear masks to make sure we do not contaminate the gorillas with any disease. We were also asked to listen to the instructions of our guides and to respect a certain distance. Although this is a one-of-a-kind experience, you also need to know the following. It was tough trekking up the forest, and you need a certain level of fitness to get there. By the time we found the gorillas, it was almost midday. The sun was hot and blinding. So our gorillas went into the dense vegetation and completely disappeared. It was very hard to take any photos. We could barely see them moving behind the thick jungle leaves. This is a very individual experience and everything depends on your luck, the terrain and the gorilla family you'll be sent to find. You might get lucky and spend a full hour observing them. Unfortunately for us, our gorilla family decided to hide in the jungle. This is an expensive experience but contributing to the gorilla conservation efforts in Uganda is worth it. Let's head to our last stop in Uganda, the most beautiful lake in the country, Lake Bunyoni. Traveling from Windy's impenetrable forest to Lake Bunyoni, everywhere you look, the mountain hills are covered with tea and coffee plantations. These enchanting landscapes are made of lush green slopes and picturesque views. The rolling mountain hills create a stunning backdrop of neatly manicured rows of tea bushes. There were so many scenic views. We kept asking our guide, Bob, to stop at almost every corner to take photos and take it all in. We drove to tiny villages perched on the hills. The drive to Lake Bunyoni was really beautiful. Lake Bunyoni is surely the most stunning lake in Uganda. Its winding shore and steep terraced hills surround 29 islets. We had booked a hotel on an island in the lake. The sunset boat ride to get to our hotel was serene and so relaxing. Each island in the lake has its own history and landmarks. Do you hear the sound? This is the song of the Grey Crown Crane, the national bird of Uganda. The tiny island we stayed at has several resident zebras. Together with other antelopes roaming freely in the garden surrounding our hotel. Our island was lush and beautiful. It was a pleasure to walk around the property. The next morning we got up at sunrise. One of the hotel staff had promised to show us the cranes from up close. Wow. He took us on a boat ride to approach them. These birds are truly beautiful and elegant. Lake Bunyoni is a magical place, especially early morning, when some mist is rising from its placid waters. We went for a walk around the island, among the animals that live here. This was our last day in Uganda, and frankly, we did not want to leave. Uganda surprised us with its lush green nature and the amazing red color of its soil. I was dazzled by country's biodiversity, gorgeous landscapes and fantastic wildlife encounters. 
Uganda has everything to make you fall in love with its culture, its people, and its natural beauty. If you have the chance, go visit the Pearl of Africa. Uganda is worth putting on your travel list. Uganda has two main seasons, a dry season and a rainy season. The dry season is in June, July, August, December, January and February. The rainy season is in March, April, May, September, October and November. We traveled there beginning of April and had a fantastic time. The weather was not that rainy during our visit and the nature around us was lush green. The occasional rainfall made the jungle come alive. These are also some of the most gorgeous sunrises I have seen in my life. At dawn, we would marvel at the magic of the blazing skies and would listen to the sounds of the jungle. Every sunrise was a symphony of joy, a canvas of wonder and a gift to our souls. I fell in love with Uganda and I hope I was able to share with you the essence of this beautiful country. I'm so happy to see that you made it until the end of this video. Thank you, your support means so much to me. For a little boost of love, please click that subscribe button. And if you've been to Uganda and have favorite places or tips to share, please write a comment below so other people can read about your experience. See you soon for another exciting destination.